which we have handled, which we have seen with our eyes, this is the word of truth. We have not followed cunningly devised fables. So we were eyewitnesses of this thing. We walk in Bible, but we have seen the Lord. Our eyes have seen the Lord. I don't know about you. When you have become a supernatural Christian, God gets into you and starts walking himself. He no longer leads. He is now Ayakara. 100 percent true. true. I saw German written on your forehead like German. 15 October. Yes. 1981. Yes. Do it. Yes. Yes. You know me and you know everything. <laughs> if I be a prophet of God, miracle money now. Declared miracle money. There's 55,000 in his bank account. How much is this? <laughs> Supernatural weight loss. Somebody who is sick can just be healed like that. Yes. This is the good news we preach. A good news world with Hubert Angel provoking a reaction. And always worth hearing. Open your Bibles in the book of Luke and I would say chapter number two. And as the older days goes, if you don't know where Luke is, just look. <laughs> and I'll start from verse number 22. Are you there? And when the days of your purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Are you still here? Yes. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. That's why we always say, blessed is the womb that travails in birth for a male child. You notice what it says here, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. Yes. Let's go. In other words, separated to the Lord. According to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves and two young pigeons. Let's go. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. Whose name was what? Simeon. The same man was a just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. You might miss what I'm about to give you, but you have to understand this. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost. By who? By the Holy Spirit. Revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost. That he should not see death. Before he had seen Jesus Christ. <laughs> Imagine if your testimony is you, don't, you will not die until Jesus comes. Ah. So you know immediately you are the preventer of Jesus' death. Even the birth, you are the preventer of it. Uh, you will get it in a few minutes. And then he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, mm -hmm, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let me die in peace according to your word. <laughs> Some of you would have said, let me stay a little bit longer. <laughs> this guy said, I can die now. <laughs> For my eyes have seen my salvation and your salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of the people. Mm -hmm. And a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Mm, let's go. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. We are going to keep going. So relax. <laughs> and Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of men in Israel. And for a sign which shall be spoken again is, it says, Ye, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also, and that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And that's a prophecy if you read correctly. And there was one, Anna. This is the reason why I came here. 
Because you might think that was just a man. And there was one on him, a prophetess, a daughter of Fanwell, of the tribe of Azum. She was of a great age and had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. And the husband died. And she was a widow of about four score and four years, 44 years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings, prayers, night and day. And she coming into the instant, gave thanks likewise, exactly like Simeon. You can take your seats. Now, when we're talking about the realm of intercession, prayer is the most difficult thing that a Christian can do. Yet the most beneficial that you can actually have. Understand from everything that Jesus taught his disciples. They saw him walk on water. They never asked for lessons on how to walk on water, how to walk on water lesson. They saw him raise the dead. They never asked for how to raise the dead miracle sign and wonder lesson. They never. They saw him walk through walls. They never asked how do we preach the physics of it. They saw him walk on water. They never asked the miraculous power that caused him to walk on water like it was concrete. How did he oppose viscosity? The molecular density of water. They never asked. Only one time they were given an opportunity. They said to the Lord, teach us how to pray. They realized all the exploits of Jesus were based on one thing only and one thing only. And it was prayer. A man or woman of no prayer is a powerless man and a powerless woman. Do you realize that when you are in the realm of prayer and I watch a lot of people when they pray, I can tell it's kind of mechanized. It's like something that just they do because they ought to be doing it. The reason why we have fake prophets is because we have fake Christians. Because the more you buy, the more somebody sells it. Uh. <laughs> it's a very small thing. You keep saying that is a, that's a fake pastor. It's a fake church. The reason why fake churches, fake prophets, fake pastors, fake apostles, fake teachers and fake pastors and teachers and apostles and evangelists are there is because they are fake Christians like you and why you came to church is never to worship God. You came here to get that miracle you wanted, that house, that, that, that car, uh, that husband. So guess what? The fake prophet then arrives that is called scarcity. Uh, you know, scarcity brings demand. When something is scarce, demand rises and costs rise. So the reason why you have fake pastors is simply because you are fake. The day you demand real Christianity, the day you demand real God here, and the God that you can worship, and the God that you can pray to, and the God who is a relationship, who is in relationship with you, you will never find. Uh, you see, a praying church, listen to me. If you live here after knowing these things here, and you sit in a church somewhere, and you sit and the preacher starts talking nonsense, you can feel it in your spirit that this is not going with me because I'm a man of prayer. I'm a woman of prayer. I can send signals of the spirit. Your problem is you are fake. That's why the Bible says in the end of times, I will send them teachers who will tell them what their itching ears want to hear. You have a message you came here for. I'm sorry, it's not the right church. Because here we will teach you prayer until you submit in prayer, until your knees know the ground, until you move in the realm of the spirit and you know for sure I can communicate. And the reason why preachers will never teach this message on prayer is because one thing, they know if you learn how to pray, you no longer rely on the prophet. Oh, yes. I want to teach somebody prayer to the extent that when a demon trespasses into their own home, into their own boat, they say, out!
Oh, I'm talking to somebody here. I know what you think. Prayer is difficult. I used to think that exactly that. Until I realized there were things that people have understood in prayer. Ah, after this, I'm raising some dangerous people here. Dangerous people here. <laughs> you see, you see, the Bible talks about the Bereans. How when Paul would preach a message, the Bereans would take it home and begin to peruse. And, 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 and you, you, you understand what I'm talking about. Peruse means to go deeper. Mm -hmm. it, it seems as if to be, to browse means going deeper, but to peruse means to just pass by. No, peruse means to go deeper. They would go deeper in the message and begin to decree and declare that Paul taught us, but we have our own spirit that can discern if this thing is so. So they go home and begin to research further. But I do not recommend the Berean spirit in this church. Amen. Going home is too late. Amen. You need to be here and discerning it. And discerning it. Amen. When the preacher says something, you say, nah. That's not what the spirit is saying right now. Uh. I don't care where we are. You can be in the bus. You can be on a bus and just sitting there like this. And the preacher from the street walks in and says, Jesus, Jesus. You can be standing there and say, no, brother, you are doing it wrong. This is not the way to go about it. Because my spirit says it. My spirit has confirmed it. I wish I could preach to somebody. Sit down. So, do you understand that in the realm of intercession intercession is not what you think it is just praying uh -huh. a man of prayer can be a man of prayer a woman of prayer can be a woman of prayer and not be an intercessor yeah. I'm not talking about this 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 kindergarten intercession where you pray for your wife pray for your children pray for your mother pray for the people you know oh, yes. and you rise and say I'm an intercessor <laughs> you are a joke in the realm of the spirit The people you have called intercessors are not intercessors. They are just praying people. Intercession is five levels. You see, intercession is based on one thing. The first level are burden careers. Every intercessor in all these five levels is a burden career. Oh, you're not getting this. I'm talking about they know how to design the burden of God. Oh, oh, that at every moment that you are seen somewhere, you are praying for a nation, you are praying for this city, you are praying for that country, you are praying for that region because there is an, a burden that has been put in your spirit. So, real intercessors are people that have managed to take from the spiritual realm the entity called God distributes unto them a burden from his spirit. You see, the biggest thing God wants to do is to reveal himself through people. Amen. The reality of it is, you need a certain level of understanding what betting careers are. People that can get the message of God, what God is trying to do is to express himself. How many know Abraham Lincoln? Ever heard of him? Just raise your hand. You know, if you have never just pretend you. Because it really makes you look very stupid. Just wave your hand like this. Thank you. Oh. Please, all of us, can we just wave? Pretend we know him. Thank you so much. Where do you stay? Where do you go to school? This slave trade, he helped. Ma now, watch this now. I want you to see this. Man is not needed in heaven. When he was born, there was no nest anywhere to help, midwife to help, nothing. They went into, the father went into town, found nobody. One little man said, the doctor has gone somewhere. And they met a person, and the person said, I'm the, I can, I can deliver your child. Then the whole thing changed, zero. So he, the father of Abraham Lincoln went home. 
and there was nobody. And the home was isolated. But in that isolation, it had fields around it that you could see hundreds of meters away and nobody's there. The doctor is gone. The person who had promised that they could do it is not there. Then a person just entered their room. He said, I'll deliver. Delivered Abraham Lincoln. This same Abraham Lincoln you hear. Delivered. On the way out, they said, we have this amount. He said, where I come from, we don't use money. Yeah. Hear this. So where I come from, we don't use money. But what you can do is to call him Abraham, for he shall save people. Close the door, and the father thought, let me just ask the name of this person. Open, nobody. Looked everywhere, nobody disappeared. Yet it would take him more than seven times to apply, to, 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 to really campaign to be the president and lost over seven times. The same person God chose. <laughs> you understand why? So when you are an intercessor, you are a beaten career. Do you understand when the burden of the Lord was to bring Jesus Christ? Do you know you will not be born again today if it wasn't for Simeon and Anna? The Bible says they stayed in, in the temple praying for years for Jesus to come. Do you understand the salvation of humanity was based on two intercessors? That if it wasn't for Simeon and, and Anna, trust me, you will not be here as a Christian. That even God waited for an intercessor. There is a realm of intercession where you are a burdened career. You know the burdens of God. You are holding the powers of God. You know exactly when he gets angry, when he gets hurt, when he's excited, when he's... You know for sure. And you say, I'm going to go with this. I decree and declare. You shall become that intercessor. Imagine it every moment you know the burden of God. You know what God is doing right now in this hour. You know what he's thinking. You know what he's feeling. And you know you pray along the burdens of God. May God fill you with burden. Sit down. How does it work? <laughs> when you become sensitive to God's burdens. The first goal is to deny self. Amen. Remove your needs. Amen. They look like they are necessary. They are not. <laughs> you know one thing I've realized? Are you here? Yes. When I was young, I was interested in all this nonsense. It wasn't nonsense then. Let me give you a funny one. You know in Africa, some of you here, ice cream was a luxury. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, trust me now. Some of you, I don't want to agree, you look like, mm. you were having ice cream every Sunday, every minute, every day. <laughs> now to get to the refrigerator and not find ice cream, you will shout. Who did the groceries last week? Luxuries now have become needs. You've been sissified by the corruption of this world. So on your budget, ice cream is there. You used to see salad during wedding days. Salad. <laughs> now it's every night. Full English breakfast, my food. <laughs> Honestly. Full English, what? The day you see an egg, Christmas has arrived. <laughs> bacon. Ah, bacon. The couch in Britain has made you sissified. 
if you still control your life, you have not managed to burden, to be sensitive to burdens of the Lord. You are not. Sometimes, one time I was in, in, in a place called um, Zambia, and we had done a crusade. 40 to 50,000 people attended in the grounds. I finished around 1 a.m. People are healed. People with no with, with huge stomach power problem just reducing like this. All right? Just imagine that. The power was there. Solid. Yes, sir. With children born with no testicular glands, nothing, and dropping on. It's there on video. 1 a.m. I'm tired. We started around 8 normally. Until 1. And one man ministering. Prophesying, healing, raising the dead. On the grounds. 1 a.m. I'm tired. I'm on my way to the hotel. I got to the hotel. I'm like, and I just need a bed. Look up like this. The moment I got to the bed, God says, I want you to pray for four hours. I'm like, uh, we have healed the sick. <laughs> what is this prayer for? <laughs> now, you are now told to pray for the whole country. Yet you have a president in that country fighting you. And the prayer is to bless Zambia. How am I blessing Zambia when they are fighting me? The only person I could think of was his father who was the foreign affairs minister of Zambia. Yes, so he's my son. So I would be like, at least he's there. At least there is a same person there. Let me just pray for the government. But reality is, I knew what was taking place in there. Are you getting this? Yes, when burden grips you, you can't move from your chair. This nonsense, I'm just praying. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> when you carry burden, you become dangerous. You can't be killed easily. Because God is trying to display his anger and his emotions on the earth. But he has nobody except somebody who is sensitive to his burdens. So you know what God wants to be done in this hour, in this season, in this time. Not for your house, not for your husband, not for your children. That's little, that's myopic thinking. Ezekiel chapter number 22. Mm, verse number 29. The people of the land have used oppression and excise robbery. And have vexed the poor and the need. Yea, they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully. Do you see what that verse is talking about? He's talking again is xenophobia. They've oppressed the foreigners wrongfully. I don't know this country. I don't know what Boris Johnson is doing. The Bible says it's not Boris Johnson. There is something that can be done. Verse number 30. And I sought for a man. He didn't say for men. For one man. God is looking for just one woman here. Oh yeah. Just one woman here who will be so deadly when they see they say ah. Ah. <laughs> I see it happening here. I see it happening here. Now hear this. So among them that should make up the hedge. No, 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 no. You didn't hear me. I wish you could hear this. Says I'm looking for a man who can be the hedge. The Jura wall. <laughs> the barricade. One man. Do you see you you it's just one square foot you fit. But the Bible says, while is you are fitting one square foot, yes, occupying one square foot, I can make you a whole wall. Hey. 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 Sit down, sit down. Ah. Are you hearing this? And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. Imagine God saying, my anger is too much. It needs somebody to be a war. Hi. Do you hear the language? The language is, there is a man who can prevent God from pouring his anger. Not easy. He's not saying, I'm looking for somebody to convince me to stop. 
He's saying, I'm looking for somebody who can bear a wall. As for me, I will release my anchor and power to kill everyone. But I need somebody who can pray as an intercessor and defend my fire from going through. In other words, God is not saying, I will stop when you pray. No. He's saying, I give you the power to stop my anger, to barricade it. I will pour it out, but you will barricade. <laughs> Men with burdens that can barricade God when he wants to fire. And it's not God saying, I have a desire to fire. No, he's firing already. The bullets are flying. But saying, before they land, can there be someone, please? Because they will kill somebody. Ah. And stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy, but I found none. He didn't say I want 20 men. Listen, God is not looking for 20 men. He's looking for one man, one woman, one boy, one girl. He's looking for one. You can choose your area of influence that in my family, poverty will not touch them because of me. Sickness will not enter because of me. I barricade. Shout I barricade. Ah, in the whole university, you can be the best student. Why? Because in your family, nobody has ever had a best student award. I'm going to be the one. Thank you. Therefore, have I poured out my indignation upon them. I've consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own way have I recompensed upon their heads, says the Lord. It says because I couldn't find anyone. I killed them. Every problem that happened in your house, it is because the fault is on you. You say, yeah, they, these people are very dangerous. These people, this one, my brother doesn't listen. My sister doesn't listen. It's you. Because you have the power to barricade their stupidity. Nobody in my family is in poverty. Not one. And it's not going to happen. As long as I live, it's not happening. Even if I die today, my children will not struggle. Even if they choose not to work for the next 40 years, they are catered for. I made sure of it. A good father leaves an inheritance for his children's children. The reason why you are not rich is because your father did not leave an inheritance for his children's children, you. So we started a wrong cycle where we take care of parents because our parents also didn't take care of us. So the information has come to you now as a big parent, as an old man, as an old woman, that you should have left an inheritance for your children's children, not to look back and say, my child, take care of me. Some of you, a son-in-law is an investment. A daughter-in-law, oh, she's a witch when money doesn't come in. Meanwhile, the Bible says you should have left an inheritance for this child's own children. Right now, we should all be rich if our parents listen to this. If our grandparents listen to this, we should be rich now. All of you here, Maserati, Lamborghini, outside there. You come into church knowing exactly you love God. Now this one is because you love a Lamborghini, but God is the only way to get to the Lamborghini. He's a means to an end. Shame on you. Embarrassing. Let's go. One, two, three. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. And the wealth of the sinner is laid up for him. Let's go opposite that one. A bad woman does not leave an inheritance. <laughs> I don't blame you, old people. I don't blame you. Because your parents also didn't do it. 
And if these children don't listen to what we are saying here, they will produce the same results you produced. So we no longer take care of our children. We also take care of our parents. Supernatural power of the believer. Discover the secrets to growing in the five dimensions of God's power. Order your copy of this best-selling book with over 100,000 copies sold by Hubert Angel from the Amazon Kindle store or visit our online shop at www.hubertangel.org. Thank you, our partners and friends, for making it possible to bring this message to you. Those wishing to partner with Hubert Angel, please visit www.hubertangel.org. So the burden of the Lord, if it catches you, you become a magnet. Burden carriers. But in the realm of burdens, you have to understand that there are areas that you have to, to, to really, really be used in breaking your flesh. Someone says breaking the flesh. Breaking the flesh. Say breaking the flesh. breaking the flesh. The first level is when you manage to beat your own flesh. Paul says what? I strike a blow to my flesh. If you want burdens, because he's telling you just be a burden carrier. Be sensitive to the burdens. Doesn't mean anything. You say, okay, I'm not burden. And the burden doesn't come. Because you don't know how to get it. I beat my flesh. In other words, I wrestle it to the ground. If you look the way Paul says it, he says, I really, in the original language, in the re original rendering, he's saying, I have a funeral service for my flesh daily. He kills his flesh daily, buries it. What does it mean? It means the desires of the flesh. What the flesh says, do this way. And you know in your head, it should be this way, but I want to do this way. It says, bury it, kill it. So every morning, whether you feel like you don't feel like, take that flesh that hasn't even reacted and say, today, I bury you. I will not be angry. I will not be sad. I will not be disappointed. I will not be depressed today. I'm bearing this depression tonight, this morning. You walk on the streets of the town. And guess what happens? Somebody who anchors you, you meet them. You know, yeah, that dangerous person is coming. But I buried this in the morning. I dealt with my situation in the morning. The problem why you explode, why you have a problem every day, why you are depressed is because you never bury it in the morning. So when you get out and meet the thing that triggers you, you have not dealt with it. This is why prayer book, prayer, that prayer book is important. Prayer banks. Oh, yes. And I've told you when you pray, you are loading prayer into a bank. Yes. So that when you walk in the streets, yes. guess what happens? You meet your challenge. You say, uh -huh, I now withdraw from the banking I did in the morning. Yes. Most of you are walking outside with nothing you have deposited in prayer. But you want to withdraw money. You want to withdraw health. You want to withdraw a wife. You want to withdraw a husband. You want to withdraw a degree. Yet you never deposited nothing. If you go to the bank and say, I want 20,000, they say, where did you? <laughs> when you move from that area, are you getting this? Yes. You move to a place that is beyond this. Which is called a guardian level. Ah, I wish you were here. You move from the bed and career level to a guardian. Guardians are quality controllers in the spirit. They control the quality of life in a region. They are given regions to control. This is what the devil was called the guardian angel. He was guarding a location. That's why it's called the angel that covereth. The word covereth is guardian. What is the reason why Daniel prayed? And for 21 days, the angel was struggling to bring the message here. And he was called the angel, what? Gabriel. And it is Michael who came and prevented him from 
being overcome by the prince of Persia. Why? What happened? Because Michael was the guardian angel over Israel. So he controlled a whole city. I wish I had people here who understand what I'm talking about. Imagine when you can control a region. Huh? Listen, I'm not talking about anyone. You controlling a region. My God, my God, I wish I had people here. You see, people will sit down and say, as for this country, nothing will enter here. That is like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. Imagine putting a list on your house. This will not enter. This will not enter. This will not enter. I got it. And guardians are dangerous. Listen to this. Listen to this. The bishop of Damascus. He wasn't a bishop of Damascus then. It's theology that calls him the bishop of Damascus. The Bible says a certain disciple called Ananias. He had placed gates. Listen, close the gates of the city spiritually and physically. It wasn't just spiritually. Even physically, he put gates. Shut us down. The whole city. Paul had killed everyone as a Christian. Paul would go and get letters to kill Christians. <laughs> you are joking when you can pray for two minutes and say, thank you, I prayed too much. Oh, today was so, I was heavy. <laughs> you are a clown if you have not done 10 hours. You are a clown. If your conversation with the person who created you cannot go beyond four hours, yet your sister, you can go for days. You are canal. No, you're not hearing me. Imagine the God who created you, created a pathway, a technology called prayer, for you to reach him at any time, any given time. No network disruption. So the moment you use the name of Jesus, I'll hear you. And guess what? He says, before you pray, I will hear. And yet, you don't even take one minute with him. The one minute is like you wake up and just go, you're thinking, God, oh, God, thank you so much. <laughs> Jesus prayed one time and told God, I know you hear me always. And you've already heard me about this resurrection of Lazarus. But I'm praying for the sake of these people so they hear me. In other words, Jesus is simply saying, I'm doing a fake prayer. He's saying the one I'm doing now is for these people to hear I pray. But I know the prayer I'm doing here is useless because you have already heard me. So Jesus said, I'm doing some things for the people to hear. I don't need to call him eternal rock of ages. I don't. I'm positioning my spirit to know who he is. And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. That's it. I want them to believe me, so I said it in public. But I know you heard me. And do you know when he heard him? If you go before that, you realize that Jesus only sighed. He went, <sighs> and then he said this statement that you heard me. Where? That ha. It's another level of intercession. It's a groaning level, but it's inside another thing I'll show you. A groaning level. Where words don't come out, you're just going, ah, ah, ah. Words have already been expanded. You've said everything and now it's done. Hallelujah. You've reached the maximum of vocabulary. There's nothing that can describe God anymore except groanings and groanings. That was the Bible says the Holy Ghost will help you with groanings that cannot be articulated, uttered, articulated, put in articulate language, articulate form. There is no semantics. Or syntax in those groanings. It's now your spirit crying out to a thing that you don't know. Have you ever gotten to a point where words are done? You've gone for hours and words are done. You have repeated yourself. Even the tongues you're now saying are now repeating the other tongues you heard. Yes! I've got witnesses, I'm telling you. I said, I've got witnesses here. Imagine if you can get to a level 
where God himself can say, I bank on this one. Paul at one time, God did not re- say, I rely on the anointing. Listen to what Paul says. He says, God says to him, go to that city, for I have many people there. He didn't say I have my anointing. He said many people. God was relying on people. Imagine if you are the one God relies on. Oh! That's what the Bible says. We have also our brother Epaphras. You don't even know him. He says one like you. Who has done a lot in praying for you. To stand like you are standing. They didn't know the man was not popular. He wasn't popular like you, Angel. He wasn't on TV. But the apostle says we have Epaphras here. Yeah. Who has been instrumental in making your church and your city, even the Ladoshian church, three churches mentioned, relied on one guy's strength in his own house. <laughs> That's when a man has been made a guardian. He controls regions. He's in places of regions. And he's counting, say, that is my city, that is my town, that is my branch. Imagine if you're standing here in London and you say, as for Manchester, is mine. To distribute as a pastor for prayer, distribute it. Say, you brother, you take Manchester and Birmingham. I take this one. I take this one. You have 14 people that are saying, as for these branches are mine. If poverty enters there, it's because I was weak. Ah! (laughs) You don't understand this. There are things that will never happen to a person in this branch because of me. Listen to me. I did not say because of God. I don't know if you are getting this now. Guardians control a city. Imagine a near shut the, all the corridors and the highways and the byways to enter into, the, into, 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 into his area. Listen to this now. Listen to this area. The man is going to Damascus. And lightning struck. There was lightning. He put lightning on the gates. The spiritual and the natural. So nobody who wanted to kill Christians would go there. Paul just heard that there were people who were called Christians who were following Christ. He didn't know how powerful they were. And he had killed them all over until he got to Damascus. And a certain disciple, notice here, it's a certain because the man was not known as popular in the church. The pastor was someone else and he's sitting there and he's the certain disciples over the whole city. He is walking like this. And lightning struck Paul. Why? He put lightning as gatekeepers in the city. Ha! A prophet was running. And God said, tell that man. Why are you running? He said, I'm running. He said, there is a man running with a measuring line to build. You know, he was trying to be a builder of the wall that surrounded Jerusalem. And God said, tell that man running with a measuring line that Jerusalem will not depend on a wall. I will be a wall of fire around it. Ah! Just imagine when God says, I am the wall of fire. Say, I am the wall of fire for my family. For my family, I'm the wall of fire. I barricade. Sit down, sit down. Prayer is exciting. Prayer. They just don't know it. There is nothing in anything that God does that is as exciting as prayer. To know you have someone you can talk to. You can gossip with an entity called God. You can gossip. How exciting. You mess me up, I tell him. I report you. (laughs) Listen to me. Imagine when Jesus saw the lightning fall. Jesus appeared in the lightning. The men could provoke lightning to happen and Jesus to come. And he was a certain disciple. He wasn't even a big man, apostle, preacher, big, big. No, certain disciple. And Jesus appeared, spoke to Paul. Then watch this. Then went, he himself went to see to, to say, look, say, say, there is, let's talk here. Ananias, let's talk, please. Um, can you go and pray for 
the brother you hit with lightning day. <laughs> Imagine Jesus couldn't just say you are healed. No. He said, I know in this region there is a causer. A person who has caused this to happen. I just need to talk to him to see if he can pray for you. Then I appeared to Paul and said, there is a man who is coming to pray for you so your eyes can see. Lord, you are here. Why don't you just do it? The region is not mine. I gave it to a man. <laughs> May God give you that region. Oh, you're not hearing me. I said, may God give you that university. May God give you that region. Sit down. Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed based on one guardian called Abraham. God was coming down from heaven by the stairway of heaven. Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. The Bible says there were three. Dropped from heaven. Set in the tent of Abraham. Imagine before they said that, they were running towards Sodom and Gomorrah to kill it. Destroy everything that was there. And God said, guys, to the Father and the Holy Ghost and the Son, do you think this will work, what we're about to do? Because our region is heaven. But this region belongs to Abraham. Where exactly, when did it happen? The Bible says, I will give you, go out of your land. I will give you a certain place flowing with milk and honey. Go there. Go there. And the man went there. Listen to this. And the Bible says, everywhere you moved, you put an altar. That means his power was in prayer. And when he got there, watch this. Are you here? He said, leave your kindred, leave your people. But he took Lot. And Lot was just a businessman, a sinner. He brought him in. And when he got to the place... Lord said, my people are having a problem with you, so what do we do? <laughs> are you getting this? Yes. They said, what do we do? He said, let's go past his house. Abraham's house. God couldn't kill anybody before he reached Abraham. He walked towards Abraham. They were going like this. He said, we didn't tell Abraham. This will be a problem in heaven. Do you know blessed be Abraham? Yes. Possessor of heaven and earth. Blessed be Abraham. Possessor of what? Notice, do you notice the Bible does not say God is the. It says, Blessed be Abraham, possessor of heaven and earth. Who was possessing heaven? Abraham. Abraham. So when people read it, they hear as if, Blessed be God of Abraham. Possessor of heaven and earth, meaning God of Abraham. Yet heaven is called Abraham's bosom. That means heaven is owned by Abraham. To the extent when you go into heaven, you are actually going into Abraham's bosom. He owns it. And he blessed him. This is God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. He blessed him and told him, you are the possessor of heaven and earth. The man was so rich because he could do anything. So, what he did was very simple. He got into you know, that place and realized there is a problem here. I've taken Lot. What do I do? He said, Lot, what you're going to do here is choose wherever you want to choose. And I'll choose afterwards. Lot pointed Jordan the Jordan River, the Jordan region. This is the green area. And Abraham was left with Israel. Israel, it seems as if they grow stones. If I take you to Israel, there is no green anywhere. It's like their agriculture is stones. And he was left with Israel. Abraham was left with Israel. Then listen to what God said. Listen to this, to what God said. God then said to Abraham, now look to the east. Look to the west, to the south. To the north. Do you notice? Yeah. Lot has already pointed. This is where I want to go. And Let's Abraham go. said, now you can take your servants and go. And he's already going to his land that he chose, which is green. And Abraham is left alone. And God said, look that side. 
Israel. Look that side. Look this side. And look to where Lot has gone. I have given you all of it. Hey, Including where Lot was going. Hey. That's powerful. That's powerful. Now when Sodom needed to burn, he said, there is a guardian I put in this location called Abraham. I can't do anything until I ask Abraham. So understand this, that God couldn't do anything to a city until he asked a man. And you're sitting there. Nobody consults you. God himself knows you're useless. He said, men ought always to pray. Men ought always to pray. And remember I told you, if men ought always to pray, the genetic makeup of a man is the person who prays. The genetic makeup of a woman is the person who prays. If you don't pray, you are not a man according to God. You are not a man. You are not a human being. I pray sometimes. You know, it's not a sometimes. It says ought always to. How many people have heard me say, I'm never alone? And you can ask Sia, I can sit here like this for hours in one location. Never move. I can be in that room. The following day, I can be in the same location. Sleep there. Right there. Until the following morning, I'll be there. Nothing. No one talking to no one. I'm so comfortable in myself. I can move. Listen to me. I can have conversations that are mature with myself. Brother Kenneth Hagen had a neighbor of his who would just talk to himself. Then he decided, let me go and ask him. So, brother, why are you always talking to yourself? What will you be saying? He said, Kenneth, at least I'm talking to a gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> Why waste time talking to somebody? All these people are out to betray you. Why talk to them? Spend your time with a gentleman called Jesus. A gentleman called the Holy Ghost. Be drowned in there. Talk to him about your intentions. Your moves in the spirit. Your moves in the flesh. I want to do this. I want to move this. I will build a church. I will do this. I will do this. And the Holy Ghost is like, yeah, I like these conversations. Yes, sir. But oh, no, 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 no. You need somebody. Mm, you need somebody to love you, to like you. You suffer from approval addiction. The day they say, oh, you look nice. You're like, I, I, really? <laughs> you're beautiful. You see that. You, you, you actually see. <laughs> and then when they leave, they say, ugly and here you are you are convinced they like you men are the most wicked creature you can find the bible says the heart is deceitful among all other things and desperately wicked who can tame it and in other words your heart is desperate to be wicked if you put if i take your heart and put it here your spirit and put it here the bible is saying that one is desperately wicked it wants to be wicked it is fashioned by the world in such a way that it can be evil at any moment and like it. Then the Bible adds, who can tame it? Notice the person who is telling you you are beautiful wants you to actually say they are beautiful. Them, and they believe they are more beautiful than you. Even an ugly person, the ugliest of ugly, they will look in the mirror and go like... I went to, to a place called um, Rotherham. And as I stood in there, I remember there was a lady who was in the middle, raw, wearing, you know, this nice weave and makeup and stuff like that. She just flew from there, ran towards me with anger. I just stood there. I didn't even notice it was happening because I'm looking the other side and she got very close. And Pharaoh under the power. I turned around. I said, out in the name of Jesus. When they cracked, the walls cracked. The walls. Not the walls where she was. In the corner of the building. 
I said, out. The demon came out and the wall cracked. The room. Fragments of the building. After I said that, I said there was another one here who is a demonic entity that is even greater than this one. I'm standing on the, in the front. The pastor is sitting there. This one comes out. I call a leader. I said, you, you have a demonic entity, a spirit of a man over you. Guess who I was calling? The wife of the pastor. I didn't know. Even if I had known, if God says it, I... We'll talk about it later, but... And the pastor looked back and saw his wife and began to clap. I said, brother, I feel you, I feel you. <laughs> Just imagine that a demon is coming out of the wife. What is causing the wife not to sit next to the man? She's at the back there, wearing a cap. First lady of the church. Relaxed. The back. Demon manifesting. After the, the administration, the pastor took me in the church and said, thank you so much for what you did for my wife. Thank you. She's a trap or someone. <laughs> I, I was there to ask forgiveness. Like, no, I'm sorry. Very sorry. Uh, I just do what God is saying. You know, you want to blame God. You know, if it wasn't for God, I would have <laughs> arranged it nicely. The man is the first one to say, thank you for doing what you, thank you so much. I'm, ah. yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. They are guardians. A man could cook pepper for God. God sat down eating meat that Abraham and his wife made. Imagine Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost coming to your house in, 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 in Peckham. You open, you hear a knock. Open the door. Oh. Who are you? Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Father. You'll be like, get away. Get away. <laughs> Abraham saw. He said, ah, my Lord. You. What did you do? You get in the car there. <laughs> Young Cho was driving like this. Driving in his city, in his country. Driving, driving. It was because Young Cho was a guardian. Do you know why? Young Cho was a guardian to the extent that the Korean nation regarded him as the reason why they were still functioning as a nation. They made him a treasure as a man to the extent that he had millionaires and protection from the president guarding him every time wherever he went. He never moved with nobody who was not a multi-millionaire in cash. And guess what? They prevented anyone from touching him before he ministered. Why? Because of the verse where he says they touched him and virtue went out of him. They didn't want power to go out. When a man has become a guardian, a principality in a location, in your own company you can be principality. That when the accountant is missing details, you can say, mm, there is some figures you are not talking about. You yourself, you don't know which figures. And the man says, oh, I think you mean these ones. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So he's driving. He's driving. He gets to the to, to, um, to traffic light. When he got to a traffic light, a man rushed and sat in, his, in, the, in the passenger seat. And the wife of Young Choi is at the back seat. He sits on the side passenger seat. Huh. And we're going to talk about the plan of God for Korea. On the side. What's happening? Who are you? He turned around and young Joe realized it was Jesus. Imagine when Jesus can hijack you. You are playing with God. Everyone who doesn't know God and who doesn't believe God is because you're not showing the God we're talking about here in this church. You're not. You're talking about a fake God. Someone with no power. If we start exposing the real God we worship, trust me, no one will be left with a doubt that God is alive. Yes. 
But the one we are showing the world is the one we come in here and look for healing, look for money, and we go home and go like, oh, our church is so powerful. We got miracle money today. These guys would change nations. Say, so these are the men who have turned the world upside down. That's the Bible. Talking about disciples, they turned the world upside down. 11 men removed Judas. 11 men. How can 11 men turn the world upside down? How can Jesus have the audacity to tell a man, you, go into all the world. Yet Jesus' own time to go out of the world was when he was a baby, when he went to Egypt. And when he was healing a legion, when he went to Jordan. That's it. He was on a boat, got off the boat, healed legion, got on the boat, went back to Israel. And when he was a baby, when Herod wanted to kill him and the rain, the father ran to Egypt. That's it. And then he tells 12 men, 11 men rather, who are not even as learned as people would think. And he tells them, and they were young, 14, 15, 16. I know you think the disciples were 30. It's a lie. They were under 18 except Peter. How to hear the voice of God by Hubert Angel. Learn the secrets to hearing directly from God from this latest edition. Available to order now from the Good News Store app. Order your copy now from the Amazon Kindle or www.hubertangel.org. want to receive burdens and want to grow in it, you beat your flesh daily. Remember what I said by beating your flesh daily. You condition your mind. How do you condition your mind? You tell it. Every day. Do you know how I told myself I was rich? Every day I told myself I was rich. Every day. Even when the situation didn't agree, I forced my flesh. I was rich. Do you know what I did to my kids when didn't want vegetables? Some doctor told me vegetables were important. I agreed with the doctor. I didn't go like, uh, you know, I love Sia so much. No vegetables for him. Just meat. No. You don't want to eat. Okay. No problem. You see that I take all the toys. Or I do anything that you will know. Vegetables first. Then we go here. You know what you're doing to your kids. I see many parents who show meat like this to the... Then the kid opens, they put another one. Bait and switch, because you know. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Exactly. Why? Because you know what is beneficial to them. And it's so amazing. I don't know how God did this. It's so amazing how every food that is helpful to your body is not nice. Way back traditional healers in Africa. If the root is not bitter, it's not medicine. And I think they had something in them. They understood some few things. There's no medicine. You'll be like, wow, please give me more. No. So you beat your flesh. I told you how you beat your flesh. You remember, you are going into these levels. But for you to go into those levels, you need to beat your flesh. Because if you don't beat your flesh, rebellion is so dangerous. Rebellion does not start as rebellion. It starts under a certain movement of pushing away from the Lord. Where you, you start distancing yourself from what God wants and going your own way. And then continuously you are going your own way. Even when you know what God wants. Before you know it, you went into a point of disregarding scripture. So even if you hear a verse that contradicts what you do. You don't care. Now you're going into a bad idea, a bad area now. Where the Bible says your conscience is seared with a hot iron. That means all the morals, the things that are right, now you've bent them with a hot iron. You can't read. Your mind can't read. They are tossed in your brain. They are tossed in your spirit. So you can't follow them now. When you see the scripture saying something and you go another way, you know you're about to get into a dangerous place where you can't come back. 
That's why I say some of you, after they have believed, will they tend the faith of God to be of none effect? Then the Bible says, God forbid. It says, after they have tested of the glory to bring them back again to Christ, it is impossible. This is Paul. It says, it is impossible. After you move from moving away from God, disregarding scripture, and you enter an area where your conscience is now said with a hot iron, you can't, even if you hear God said, you can't follow. Now you are now bigger than God now. You're a dangerous person. Imagine I tell you, God said. And you go like, I know what God said, but I'm not doing it. Huh? Now he says, lowering every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. If your knowledge is now higher than God's knowledge, what you want is now higher than what God is saying. Ask yourself, is it you God or the devil using you now? Because God is looking for men to use. The devil is also looking for men and women to use. Are you a messenger of God or a messenger of the devil? This is how you do it. How you conquer your flesh is every morning, even the day when things are okay. Just turn there and go like, today I bury this. I bury this attitude. I bury this one. Because listen, turn to your neighbor and say, your attitude, your attitude. is your altitude. altitude. You never go higher if your attitude is rotten. And listen to this. Avoid winning an argument. Lose it. For the sake of the kingdom, lose an argument. You want to burn it? Listen to me. So, so many people say, how do I get the burden of the Lord? It is what I'm telling you now. If you beat your flesh, your flesh is beaten by confession. Every day confess the weight over your flesh. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing this. 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 If they try to do this, I'm going this direction. See, Pastor Chris helped me a lot in understanding how to just keep quiet when people talk. He, he called me one time and he said, he said, I do not care what anybody would try to send to our ministry, to anybody. I don't receive those things because people have no access to me and will never have access to me. He said, if anybody brings me video, photograph, picture of you doing whatever they say you are doing, I will not believe it. I said, well, with the evidence that you won't believe. I said, I'll only believe what God says about you. It changed my life. He says, no, there's nothing I'm going to believe. I believe what the Bible says about you. Not what somebody comes to me and tells me, oh, this, this, this. No. When you find real guardians in your own life. This is why it is important to find a guardian in your own life. But the dangerous thing about guardians is they might not be able to see it because they are not watchers. Genesis 14 verse number 13. And there came one that had escaped and told Abraham the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, the Amorite brother of Eschol and brother of Anam. These were the confederate with Abraham. Mm -hmm. Let's go. And when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, Lula had Kabaya. If something happens and a guardian was not careful to guard his location, ah. And somebody has entered a territory of a guardian. A guardian can do this. Listen to this. He armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318. 300 and what? 318. I want you to not miss what, I, what is coming. 318. This is a guardian who did not see the danger coming. And somebody was taken from his family. And yet he's the guard of all the regions. Israel, Jordan Valley, everything. The Jordan country. He is in charge, Abraham. Including where Lot is, Sodom and Gomorrah. He is in charge. And the brother is taken. And he never knew it. So a guardian can have somebody. Something wrong happening to a member. 
But here it is. What a guardian can do. And pursued them unto Dan. Let's go. And he divided himself. No, you didn't hear me at all. Oh my God. One man stood here like this and took Abraham and put one there. One Abraham there. One Abraham there. <laughs> hey! That's three, 636 people. He made himself 613. 637 to be exact. Have you not heard people? I come to church here and I speak to a woman and say, you, I saw you. I was in your house at 6. Have you not heard several times? I was in your house at 3 a.m. And I did this and I said this. I came to your house at 12 and I was sitting there in the afternoon and pointed at this woman and this woman and this woman. And someone said, yes, you were there. I saw you. And was it not two weeks ago when this woman, they heard a sound coming out of the walls in the toilet and me singing there. And they got in the toilet and didn't see anything and sound was coming out of the wall. And they went into the dining room, sitting room to, to, to start their Bible study and I stood before them. Yet I was in my house. An ability by the technology of God of the Spirit to split yourself. Where they are gossiping about you, you arrive. You go surprise, surprise. Or you wait until they are dispersed and they go to each one to their house and you arrive at their house. They say, ha. Ah. There are men you are looking down. They are dangerous people. Dangerous people. People who can travel at night to control cities and regions. Who can tell which is you can't move now. They infect the atmosphere, the traveling path of witches. Witches will tell you, I'm not passing by that area. Now your family is ravaged every day. Your kids have now become the spoil of the enemy. Sons and daughters sleeping around everywhere. There's no, no demarcation. Sons open their zippers, everything for anything that walks. Ladies open their legs for everyone that just says, I love you. And they justify that sin. Oh, she's my girlfriend. No. Sin is sin. What is disgusting is disgusting. How can it be okay for the temple of the Lord to open his legs? How? How is it okay? It's the 21st century. What has a century got to do with it? The year doesn't know it's a year. We live in a world where people like the Kardashians, you have to run to see somebody who became popular because of a sex step. All of you women here are affected by Kim Kardashian. Makeup, Kim. The way she wears, oh, look at her, look at the, oh, wow. To think this person has been changing men and not afraid of it. Doesn't matter. It's okay. Oh, look at how beautiful she is. No, she's a whore. It's a prostitute. That's a prostitute and has become your role model. What sort of Christian are you? That a prostitute is the one you say, That's, look at, look, look at, look at that. I want to be like this. And the Holy Ghost is like, yes, my daughter, this is nice. <laughs> the less the clothes, the more you, are, you like it to be like that. Yet some people are taking territory of cities. Ha! Some people have taken cities. 
Oh, you have taken his clothes off. Oh, I'm stopping a lot of men right now. I'm stopping a lot of men. And women are just thinking I'm fighting them. No. There are some men right now that they've realized their targets have been closed now. How can your bank be on zero? Your company never have anything. Nothing. You can be a guardian concerning money. Where you say to yourself, any new money that comes to this city has to pass through my bank account. Any new money has to pass through my bank account. There's a power with money. How can this man be in an ambassadorial role and with the main, main function being investments coming into the country? What has happened? What am I a guardian of? That's why miracle money comes from here. Because we have the ability to control money. And miracle money was not to create millions for you. It was to show you God can bring money. The Bible says there is a spirit of God in man. Mm. Are you ready to become a guardian? I said, are you ready to become a guardian? Those who say, I want to be a guardian. Are you flowing? Job went to heaven. As a story, as a discussion, he was on earth. By the parameters of the heavenly realm, he was left on earth. And he only suffered because of a discussion between two entities he never met. God and the devil discussed. Job is not in the meeting. Imagine when your life is discussed and you're not there to contribute. And the people discussing your life are the ones who can control it. It's the devil and God. They are discussing. And God says, have you met my guardian on earth? A man called Job. How he protects everyone. Job is on earth. Meanwhile, Job is on earth. He doesn't know there is a conversation. He's about to suffer based on a war between two entities. <laughs> the devil said, does he fear you for nothing? You have put a hedge around him. Huh? In other words, he couldn't be attacked. You see the reason why some people die young and others live long in Christendom? Is because some die young and they are no longer needed on earth. Because their use is gone. It can be their use is gone in a very positive way. It is time for them to go. But sometimes you are no longer needed because you are useless. You are still a Christian, but you are no longer needed. Imagine God wants to express his burden through your body. And through your mouth. And God knows the pathways for angels and demons to move is sound waves. But sound waves coming from something that is flesh. So when he spoke in the body of Jesus, it was okay. But now he wants you to speak. So he expresses his burden through your spirit. So your mouth speaks the burdens of God. The devil says, stretch your hand and strike him. See what will happen. So okay, okay, okay. But don't kill him. Don't do nothing to his body. Don't do it. Don't kill him. I don't know if you're hearing this. But imagine God was boasting about a guardian in a city. It says when the devil came out through the whole earth. Did you notice here? It says what? Through the whole what? Moving to and fro. He came up to God and said, I've been moving. And God said, have you noticed the guy up there? Who is standing in the gate for the whole earth? He's called Job. Imagine when God is in heaven going like, yeah, I got a guy there. I've got my people. Job will give you an offer you can't refuse. Job was dangerous. You only know Job for leprosy. But you don't realize how powerful Job was. 
that even God, after all the things have taken place, God comes to communicate with him. Do you know where I laid the foundation of the earth? Job is like, I, I, I knew you by hearing, but now I've seen you. But they are able to converse because somebody is a guardian. Do you understand that when Abraham and Sarah were sitting there and Sarah laughed, who did God ask why did Sarah laugh? Abraham. He is the guardian of anything that happens there. I don't know if you are hearing this. I don't know if you are hearing this. You open your eyes. You beat your flesh. When you beat your flesh, you move into the second level, which is a receptor. When I say receptor, I'm talking about somebody who can receive the signals of the spirit. You'll be moving like this and just feel like, ah, no. I'm not moving forward. This is it. People want that. They want to push you into an area. Go like, no, 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 I'm not going there. Why are you not going there? I'm just not going, not going there. I'm not entering that thing. But, but it's okay. It's so brilliant. I'm not entering. I think you've heard the issue of prophetess being driven to, 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 I think it was matches at that time from London by Pastor Ronnie in a, in a BMW. And they bought their new BMW. So they got here in there, drove as they were driving. Signals. Because when you beat your flesh, signals come. The breaking of the flesh is the release of the anointing. Fasting can break your flesh. Amen. Confession on a daily basis, even when you have not done anything that is wrong. I'm, talking, I'm not talking about confessing to God. I'm talking about, I'm rich. I'm bold. I do not have this problem. I do not have anger. I do not have depression. I'm not stressed by anyhow. I'm living my best life. Yeah. You know, I tell myself I'm the best prophet on earth. Yeah. And I'm, this is not a lie. It's true, but I just need to confess it ever over again. <laughs> You see, I'm God's favorite prophet. Yeah. No, I'm not lying. Oh. It's just that I need to confess it over and over again for me to know it. I entered into, into, into America. When we landed, I say, yay! The whole plane is like, hey. And when they see black person, white people just go like. <laughs> oh, white people are not dangerous. Eh? They will just like, you know, they don't want to be like, who is this one? Or our brothers will be like, hey, yo, 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 yo. <laughs> what one? <laughs> what people will look at you like this and go. If you want, ask Ricky. He'll tell you. He'll tell you. I get into that. I said, yes. God's favorite prophet is in town. And everyone is just like, eh? Is he okay? And I'm very okay. I've just announced to the whole plane that I am God's favorite prophet. Whatever they think about it is their own palaba. I'm moving. And they'll be asking, who is this one? Who is this one? And people who know me like, yes, yeah, you better angel. You don't know him. Are you? Exactly. I've made an advert <laughs> free of church. Listen to me. You are a guardian of your life. Don't allow anything to happen to you. Don't wait for Yubere Angel. Because Yubere Angel, when you are in trouble, Yubere Angel has prayed and might be sleeping that day. And you are in deep trouble. And you don't know what to do. And I'm going, Ugh. I don't go that direction. but and I'm busy. And in my visions, you're not even there. Says in my departure, when I die, grievous wolves shall enter into the church and divide the flock. What is he saying? He's saying grievous wolves shall what? Shall come and divide. Grievous wolves shall come and divide the flock. Grievous wolves shall come and divide the flock. Grievous wolves shall come and divide the flock. How does he know that it needs to wait until he dies? 
He was the guardian. I don't know if you're getting this. He was the guardian, so he knew. I need to do what? To die first in order for this to happen. There are men that if they're still alive, you will never see anything. But in the realm of the devil, there are also men that as long as they live, you can't see. In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. That means if he had not died, there was no seeing. There are people who need to die for you to see your future. The power of a prophet is not seen by his ability to prophesy, but his ability to kill. <laughs> Do you understand why the Bible says when a prophet speaks, fear him? Because in the position of speaking, see from guardians, you go to people we call custodians. From custodians, you go to watchers. From watchers, you go to judges. Do you understand? <laughs> like I said before, there are people who can remove oxygen from entering your nostrils. When it's about to enter, they remove it. Like it's not, it's not entering. Even oxygen knows it listens to the voice of a man. If Jesus could speak to trees. You know, guardians are very dangerous. Because guardians have got power. And when you find a guardian, for you to fall under the influence of that guardian, you need to submit yourself. Hear this now. Hear this. Do you understand that the Lord Jesus you saved submitted? Now, you don't know this. Let me explain. The Bible says he went to John the Baptist. And John the Baptist was coming as a forerunner. He said, the one is coming who will baptize you with the spirit and with the fire to the extent that his shoe, whose shoe latches I'm not able to untie or tie. And when Jesus arrives, he enters and squats in the waters of the Jordan and say, baptize me. John retorted. He's like, no, 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 sir. No, 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 no. You are greater than me. Jesus said, let all righteousness be fulfilled. You baptize me. Even God knelt down before John. The creator bowing down before a creature and saying, anoint me, baptize me now so we can fulfill reality. You say we are equal in, we are all equal, we are all children of God. You are lying. Go to heaven. There are 24 elders. They will tell you a different story. You don't go to heaven and go like, Peter, fetch me some water. Peter. <laughs> hey. Ah, That's when you know that same day your, your destination will change from heaven to hell straight. <laughs> we are all equal. We are all children of God. Anti grace. You think we are equal? Trust me, we are not. As much as you might hate to hear it, I'm not like you. From there, you get to people who are called custodians. Custodians are keepers of a revelation or the secrets of God. These ones know what God is doing in the hour. It's not just a matter of putting burdens. No. These ones have got new realities. Remember the Bible says, behold, I do a new thing. How can you do a new thing when we have the word? In other words, the thing that I'm bringing is new revelation. He's saying, I have fresh wine to give to people. So these guys can get signals into new realities of God. How to get into this area? How to get into this area? How to get into this area? Custodians are realities that are secrets that are given to a man who has moved from a burden career to a guardian. And now by his spirit's excellency, by the excellence of his spirit, he has now attained a level called custodian where God can say, you now qualify to keep my secrets. 
Most prophets are there on custodians. They keep secrets for God. That the whole town we can stand here and I can tell you football scores. And you wonder, why should football scores be important? It simply means God wants to give you some secrets so I can give you secrets. That he knows. So to God, the football has already been played. Now he just gives me secrets. For what reason? Remember, there are millions, in fact, 3.5 billion fans of what? Fans of what? Of football. Now they hear a man talking about their area. Hours before, days before, a week before, months before who is going to win. What do you think they will do? They will say, let's look. Let's see if it happens. And then it happens exactly as it is said. Guess what? They're like, okay, wait a minute. How did you do that? Genetics of Words, an Amazon bestseller by Hubert Angel. Learn how to recreate your world through the supernatural power behind your words. Get your copy of this riveting book that will transform your language. Available now at www.hubertangel.org or get a digital copy on Amazon Kindle. Custodians of a revelation, they carry it and they know for sure what it is. Sitting in my house like this and to see Jesus walk and Moses there holding a scepter and give it to prophetess and say, you have the mantle for, for prayer. What you see now happening with prayer is a custodian of secrets of prayer. Things you see. These are tangible things. Trust me. It is not given to a person only. You can decide, I will take this position. In your own house, you can decide it. You can say, I'm joining this chariot and become a prayer magnet. Imagine while I'm sitting in my house, just to hear that you were praying for me, you. And I come here sitting, I'm moving around and I'm like, this is the person who is praying for me. This is the person who prays for me. And you think, I don't know you, but I've already seen you. Hear this now. Custodians are dangerous. I went to a place with a young apostle. He's a son of mine called Apostle Miz Mzwake. He was at a university somewhere with just a small crowd. And he was, people were hearing of him. But impact was not happening the way he wanted to happen. And I, I had a surprise visit. And I went there. And they were okay, but in a small place, in a, like a theater. And I went to the walls. And I pushed the wall. And I went to the left and I pushed the wall and I went to the back I pushed the wall I went to the front I pushed the wall I said I pushed the wall of this church for it to grow listen to me listen the following week they came back to the same hall the university had already blocked the door following week following day and then guess what happened they are now using it in the field people are flowing like you've never seen in your life listen to me they are not looking for me because there was no advert for me all of them are looking for Apostle Mizum's work. From there, he started making an impact. He was making an impact, even as a son. But beyond the pushing and pushing of walls, there was somebody who was a guardian and a custodian of that revelation of growth who needed to do it. And he was blessed enough to know, to have an eye that could see a custodian. And say, I'm submitting to this custodian to give me the right of passage. A man ran to Bishop Oyedepo, 10, 20 people, 20 members in his church. He just ran and grabbed his feet, say, please, say, help my church. Said, so go and increase. Ah, go and increase. Yes. Following Sunday, thousands of members. From 10 to 20 members. Why? Listen to this. What causes it to happen? When a man is a custodian of a certain revelation, there are people who are anointed and given grace rather to get 
to know some few things about things. That as long as you remain prideful and you can't see who they are, you remain like that. You remain like that. Be careful that this fake integrity will lead you into poverty. Can't do that to me. Who are you? Listen to this now. Are you here? Are you here? Are you here? Imagine the power of these people. I'm, I'm going to, I get to Nigeria and I'm sitting there, sit, I'm sitting there with Pastor Ricky there, uh, Brother Mike Opala, great businessman with a brilliant fashion, uh, fashion house is called Mike Clover and, and, and hotels there. And I'm sitting there, they are with me, they are my team. And I'm just sitting there and Pastor Chris walks for the first time. I'm seeing him in flesh. He's walking and goes to the, comes to me, hugs me, uh, says something, and I say something to him. And, you know, I've been invited by people that told me Pastor Chris knew I was coming. So I'm like, I've never heard of anybody preaching for Pastor Chris in his church who is not in Christ members. So I'm in there for the first time. And I've been told to preach. And I'm preaching and I said, Pastor Chris, come run with the mic. I gave them and they sat down like I was not doing anything. Said they, he went to the front. He said, Prophet Angel. Um, no, Pastor Chris is soft. I'm still trying to be soft. <laughs> and he says, whatever you came here for, the revelation of the word... The moment he did that, now scripture started running into me, connecting dots and dots. I was already in revelation of the, I was a teacher, but it went beyond when I met Pastor Chris. And then he told me, go hear this. One day, I was just sitting in my house. I got a call. I know you, you do a lot of prophecy, but I want you to Go out there, heal the sick. What? Yeah. You have an impact, a great impact, healing the sick. We were already doing some healing. But from that moment, Healing Institute was birthed. And that's a reality. And now we have thousands and thousands and thousands of people joining. Miracles you have never had. You've never heard of stuff like that that happens there. I don't know if you understand. When you can, if you're new here, ask um, Director Stace Riggs, Director Ashwin, and Director Moses there. Ask them what's happening in the Healing Institute. Ask them. And you see, it was based on one man. Thank you, guys. It was based on one man. Saying, go heal the sick. It is written in the book of Mark. Why didn't we use it? Why is it the word of a custodian Give, gives rise to that? See? Another bishop from the Scandinavia got to Christ Timbers. And of course, we, in, during the partners and stuff like that, we give money and, and stuff like that. And, and our target is millions, not just million. We have reached that, all right? Now, here's the brother, white guy, white bishop. All he wanted was to give more than 5,000. He's been giving 5,000, 5,000, 5,000. So are you hearing me? Yes. When somebody's a custodian of a revelation, Pastor Chris is a distributor. <sighs> a tributary of graces. A man moved. Listen, this bishop from the Scandinavian region was giving partnership, partnership, 5,000, 5,000 every year, 5,000 every year. He got one of my brothers who is an esteemed man of God, somebody I well respect, called Pastor Beard and Lawal. He is always, he's, he's, he's somebody who is interested in sponsoring the gospel. Guess what happened? 
This bishop went to him and said, I know you are winning awards here for, for your partnership. How do I move from 5,000 to 10,000? Please give me the secret to move. I want to give 10,000 next time. I don't want 5,000. He looked at him. I said, give. The man was waiting for a revelation. He didn't get to understand that Pastor Bildon Law received a tributary from a tributary called Pastor Chris. A certain revelation because he's a custodian of a revelation of money. And immediately, the man is thinking, I'll be told, you do this, you save like this. And he says, give 10,000. He said, no, I mean, like, how do I raise it from five to give 10? He said, yeah, you give 10. He said, I left disappointed. Then the following year, he gave more than 10. When a custodian of a revelation, Malikabaya, when a custodian of a revelation begins to announce it to you, he is not announcing it as an instruction. He is giving you an empowerment to do it. Men will carry an empowerment because they have submitted to a judge, a custodian and a watcher, a guardian of revelation, a burden carrier of the Lord in the form of Pastor Chris. What are you talking about? What do you want to do this year? Some of you, even in your finances, you don't even know what to do. Even in your finances, to say, when are you going to give the money that, is, that makes sense? You want to know, how do I save in order to give? Give that one you want to give. Do you understand that the moment I started giving 100,000, 200,000, I started getting it. To the point that when we start recalculating how much we have given, we're like, wait a minute. You mean we gave over a million? How are we, how are we getting this money? How? How did we even get it there? Because all we did was give what we have. That's it. So much, so much is lost in calculating what to give. This is the reason why you're not giving yourself the Bible says, Paul and Silas, men who exerted themselves for the kingdom, exerted themselves. They pushed themselves beyond boundaries. These men can just tell you, move. They go like, okay, I'm moving. Oh, you want a new house? Go to a new house. So they didn't even hear nothing this area. Do you want a new car? Get the new car. See, see, when I say something like this, you want to hear the how and the whys and the who. No. I'm a custodian of money revelation. Go get that money. Go get that pay. Get paid. Money is coming. What? What were you thinking that book was all about? That message was money. No, it is a custodian announcing to money. It is no option but to come to you. When you want to get burden in your spirit, you break your flesh. Mm-hmm. You begin to become a receptor of signals from God. Then at the end of it, you align with God. You align. <laughs> this one is closer to home. I can sit down and be rude and tell you, you will change. Why? Because I know where we are getting with you. I know you're getting into alignment. Alignment is when God says something and you just go like, yeah, we're doing it. Does it make sense? Yeah, because God said it, he knows where we're going. You know, the process to go there is painful more than the enjoyment of it. The process is very painful. It removes all your integrity, all your desire, all your needs, all your wants. And go like, I'm doing it no matter what. I'm following this and I'm getting into alignment. But it takes you to break your flesh. It takes you to receive signals. Then it takes you to say, I'm in alignment now. Do you think I want to come to church every Sunday? Now I desire it. Way back. Oh, I knew I was the prophet. And people are expecting, I'm like, not today. I feel like if, if you give me five more hours in bed, it will work. And it's not like I'm sleeping like this. No, I'm awake, doing something, but just the, listen, I told you before. Uh, when I'm alone, I'm speaking to a gentleman. Oh, yeah. It's always good to speak to a rich man. 
Every day, just speaking to a rich man. Telling myself plans. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. The moment I talk to you, I don't know, things are very difficult for me. Right now, my kid, there's no school fees. Ah, so depressing. Better speak to yourself. The Bible says, speaking to yourselves. And singing to yourself. Him, spiritual hymn, singing to yourself. Composing songs for us. How great thou art me. <laughs> Didn't say singing to, Lord, to the Lord. Singing to yourselves. I know you don't, don't understand it. You have never sang a song for yourself. Listen to me. When you get in alignment, even the things that were difficult for you, you wonder why was I even be, be, becoming difficult like this. You laugh at yourself like, ah, I delayed myself. I could have just moved along with the floor. When I didn't have money, I had a problem. I was hearing all this. My brother was telling me, uh, God Sam, I was telling me, you know, you read this. There are people like this who are in America. Who do? I'm like, this guy is a daydreamer. But I started shifting and changing and changing and modeling myself and molding myself towards a certain goal, a certain picture, a certain destiny. And before you know it, I knew exactly where to go. I knew exactly who was mine. I knew exactly how to do the things I needed to do. I knew exactly where I was going to be in five years. Listen to me. When you see us now here, you see us here right now. We didn't arrive here by mistake. We would be shocked. I would be shocked if I was not here. I would be shocked. Imagine receiving signals of the Lord that a woman of God in the name of Prophet is B.B. Angel is in a car, right? And says, something wrong with this car. And while she's in the vision appears and the Lord in that vision says, get out of the car. Get out of a new car. Says, pack it, pack it now, pack now. They explained that the car is good. If there was any problem, it would give you signs and all that. Said, there is a signal I'm receiving that is different from the signal you see. <laughs> they parked by the cab. She comes out, goes to this hill there that was there, just in a gradient that is there, and stood there. And Pastor moves out, his wife moves out, and they go in there and stand like this. Now imagine. Before they even stand, they did like three, four steps and the car blew up. In Britain here. If no one was in that car with a signal, a whole family would be dead. One person with a signal. But a signal will never happen to you until you break your flesh. So when your flesh is still there, you can't get signals. So when a man, when a woman of God tells you, you're doing wrong here, you won't feel it. Why? Because your flesh is covering you too much. So signals are not getting in there to say this is wrong. So the only mind you can get is somebody when they explain from a natural standpoint why this is wrong. But when they explain from a natural standpoint, your reasoning has to be captured into it. And if your reasoning is not strong enough, you will reason out and reason away all the reasons that he's giving you. Until the signals start to move. Then you realize, uh, 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 uh. this is red, 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 red. Move. This is not the right time to do this. Move. Are you hearing this now? Are you hearing this? There is a power in sensitivity. Just knowing I'm not doing this today. Can you come tomorrow to my house? No. Huh? Yeah, I'm not happy. It's not happening. What do you mean? A man, I told a man, don't go to your wife. Remember, I, I was in the city sports center and I'm ministering. I called a man from the stage and I said, come down. He came down. I said, sir, don't go to your house. Divorce your wife. Ah, the whole church was like, what kind of man of God tells a man to divorce his wife? Everyone went like, ah, ah, ah. You could hear people gossip. I said, this is what is going to happen. You will not listen to me because the church would think, how can a prophet tell somebody to divorce a wife? 
But I'm telling you now, when you go back to that woman, that woman is living in South Africa. I mentioned their address in South Africa. I said, she will come next week and she will have HIV. In fact, she will have AIDS. It was gone to AIDS. And in those days, you couldn't cure those things. There was no pills for anything. And this woman didn't even tell the man that she had contracted it in South Africa. I said, when you go, you will live with this woman for a few years. After living with this woman for a few years, she will die in your house. And when she dies in your house, you will have AIDS, the wife will die, and the family will refuse to bury the body. He didn't respond. He was just like, two years, three years down the line, went back to Zimbabwe. The man ran, grabbed my leg, said, help me. What happened? My wife is in the house. Dead body. I don't know what to do. I'm like, hey, what do you want me to do? I'm, you, you prophesied about it. Now I'm thinking, what did I prophesy? I don't remember. You said my wife will come from there. I should not go back. Uh, I'm like, you are the one. So what is happening? The family has refused to, to, to bury. Yeah. They blamed him for killing the wife. One receptor caught it three years prior to the death. Three years I'd already seen it. And I'm already announcing it to a man who is not hearing. You see, when your flesh is covering your body, since you can't get the signals I get, the only reasonable position for you to stand on is arguments. Until you mature, then you go like, oh, oh, I took my time. This is actually a disadvantage for me. It wasn't a disadvantage for anyone. It was for me. I grew up in submission to my men of God. This is about men of God here. It's not about anybody. It's about men of God. I submitted to my men of God to the point that if Pastor Chris tells me now, stop preaching, come now. I leave this mic down here. That's why that phone never rings unless it's Pastor Chris when I'm preaching. You see, I'm always with the phone. I'm not stupid. You, you put your phone in the bag there and you're a preacher. You have a father. And the father calls and calls and calls. Meanwhile, he wants to tell you, run, the building, I saw it on fire. <laughs> and here you, go, you are going, fire of the Holy Ghost, Fire! <laughs> I don't know if you are hearing me. And when you move from, from custodians, you go to watchers. Custodians are very, very particular. They know for sure. They've been given a country. So they know secrets in there. It doesn't matter what you think. You can think you are voting in a government into place. When it's a custodian who is in there and knows that there is a principality who is preventing Whatever you want from happening. Custodians rule countries. Rule locations. Because they know the secrets that God has for the nation. Then you have what is called watchers. Watchers are observers. They report. These are observers. We're talking about people who report things that are happening on earth. That's why the Bible says, take care of these little children. For their angels are always before the Lord daily. What are they doing? Reporting. There are people who just stand there like this. Watchers. One time I got into a city in Thameside. And I saw demonic forces. Then from demonic forces I moved. And also I was walking just at the market like this. Seeing demonic forces. People who had... You know, we, we are lame in the, in the legs with demons holding their leg like this. And God said, they don't know that these are demons holding their leg. To them, it's just paralysis. <coughs> and when somebody was bowled over, it was like a demon is holding them in a chokehold like this. To them, it's just the back that doesn't straighten up. And all that demon needed to be told was, get out. Leave this person. But the person has no sensitivity to the things of the spirit. He's even denying those things exist. So you can't help them. Then from there, I went into the market there. And I, I went into another market that is, there's a farmer's market there. And I went in there and I saw people standing by the corner like this. 
And I'm thinking, what this? They look very clean, different form of clothes and stuff like that. And I would realize they would appear, disappear, appear. Then they go like visible and I realize these are angels. And the Lord said, these are observers. They are watchers. All they do is report. They give a report on a second basis what is happening now. Not that God doesn't know. But God prepared and created a world that functions on principles and order. Imagine, imagine the Bible would speak of if there is a watchman in the city and he sees a weapon arriving or sword coming to the city and he doesn't warn the people, the blood of the people will be upon the watchman, not upon the people. It will be upon the watchman. That means the watchman is there to talk to God about there is something coming. And the watchman doesn't just talk to God. He tells the people. He warns the people. See, some of the prophecies I give you there are proof I'm a watchman. I'm giving you what will take place. What will happen is what I'm giving you. How do I know what's happening? I'm a watcher. Then from there you get to a judge. If you look to a place that I told you called a custodian of a, of a revelation. The Bible says the, when Moses is read. I want you to go to 2 Corinthians 3.15. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, I, I don't know if you understand this. The law of God, 611, even 613, became the law of Moses. But the Bible here began to call it Moses. When the whole Bible is now embodied in one person, that God doesn't want to call to say Genesis, Exodus, Deuteronomy, Leviticus, Numbers. No, he's now calling it Moses. <laughs> when they went to Jesus and said, um, Lord, we were advised that if our wives cough wrongly, we can divorce them by a letter of divorcement. God, we had given that law to Moses. Jesus changed on Moses. He said, Moses gave you that law because of the hardness of your heart. Huh? What? That's when a man has become a judge in the spirit. That is now making rules for God. No, he did it without God's permission. Wow. Hallelujah. Now you're not hearing me. Thank you, sir. Listen to this. This is what Paul said. He said, concerning virgins, I have no commandment from the Lord. <laughs> Paul says, I have no rule from God. I'm now giving you my own. New Testament. You move around, you say, hey, 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 this prophet is just giving his own rules. Moses, Paul, Paul himself said, I have no commandment from the Lord concerning this, but I'm now giving you my own commandment. And you have to follow. It says a man who has walked with God and touched the powers of God and know exactly the burden of the Lord. I'm now giving you what I know and what I think, and you follow it. But guess what? Now concerning virgins, I have no commandment of the Lord. Yet I give my judgment. <laughs> you're playing around with people you say we are the same this guy here is telling you God did not speak but I now give you what I like it's one that has obtained mess of the Lord to be faithful mm -hmm. I suppose therefore that this is good for the present distress I say that it is good for a man so to be wait the man is now giving you what he needs you to do he said concerning virgins I have nothing no rule whatsoever but here is my commandment, and it made it in the Bible. You can be given a rule by a prophet and be wondering, is it true? Is it correct? Is this, uh, the man says, I have no commandment, but I've walked with God. And I've obtained mercy to say what I'm about to say. What would you do? Where would you go to report such a man? A man who can make his own rules. At any given time, you just like, I sit in the Bible, yeah, but I, it's not, but I'm making my own. <laughs> and you're sitting there, saying, no, you have to stick to the Bible. Stick. This guy is telling you, forget it. I'm a man to be trusted. So if you look at that now, what do you think? What do you think the Lord is doing? 
The Bible says Ananias and Sapphira died. It says you lied to the Holy Ghost. A man died for not giving the full offering. Because the apostle wanted him to die. In the New Testament. What is that? That's a judge. When a judge has gotten to a certain level. Where he is now telling you. You're dying because you lied on your tithing. New Testament. So I don't know. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening. Imagine what Peter said. He said, may your money perish with you. The man wanted to buy the unction. But he said, may your money perish with you. That's him saying you will die. Paul says something. He said, you will be blind for a season for what you wanted to do. A man is closing your eyes for a season. A punishment for your eyes. Why are you punishing me? Because I'm a prophet. Keepers of secrets. People who can punish you. Judges can shut the heavens. Elijah shut the heavens. It couldn't rain at his word. That's when a man can put a judgment on the earth. You will farm. You will do anything. You will do irrigation. And the man has shut the heavens. He is allowed to. Say there will not be rain, no Jew, no rain until at my word. The men put it to no Jew. Not even a drop of water, you will not see it until at my word. How is he having that boldness? He knew his level. I don't know if you understand this. God is about to release judges on the earth. I said, God is about to release judges on the earth. God is about to release judges on the earth. Says so many die and many are sick because they fail to discern the body of Christ. Now the dangerous thing about a, a judge is this, like myself. It is easy for us to die more than you. Death is always knocking on the door. But let me tell you something. When you have become a judge, it is so dangerous. There are things that people who are close to me that I love the most would know for sure. I would fail to comment on something. I would fail. I would try not to do anything. Why? Wow, hear this. Moses hit the rock. What you do not understand there is Moses is now in a judge level. So whatever he comments is God commenting. No, you're, you're missing it. So if he strikes the rock and the Bible says the rock was Christ. It means he killed Christ twice. That means it's God breaking his own word. That's why Moses couldn't see the promised land. When you sin at a judge level as God makes you a judge, you make God sin. When you sin is a temple, that's what the Bible says. If you sin, you have sinned against your own body. But when you are a judge, it is God whom you have made to sin. So your punishment is severe. You've made God a participator in your sin. So sometimes I choose to be quiet. Because if I comment on anything God says, don't comment on. It's God I forced to comment. And you reduce your life. You take years out of your own life bit by bit. So measure where you are. You might say, I want to go to a judge level. When you get there, shut up. Be a man of few words. Because any word you are speaking, it's God who is speaking it. It's not a promotion. It's still intercession. But you have now gotten to a higher level of it. You are still moving in all these. But imagine. A Good News World with Hubert Angel, provoking a reaction and always worth hearing.